Hello, and welcome to my very first Dofus Let's Play video. Uh, in fact, this is my very first YouTube video on uh, my channel here. Uh, hopefully, the first of many episodes. I'm calling this kind of a quest to 200. Uh, this team you're seeing here on screen is the team I plan to use to get to level 200. Uh, but instead of just grinding my way there and shooting for achievements and stuff, uh, we're going to try and go through the main quest line of the Dofu story as we do it. Uh, I'll bring up the achievements here. And as you can see, there's a main quest right here. Every one of these things have things to do. And as you can see, there are a lot of steps to accomplish the main storyline. And this is just one. It, it doesn't include all these side quests and stuff that they had to do. And we may knock out a, a handful of those as well. Uh, the very first few you're seeing here knocked out, that's just because I went through the tutorial, which I didn't record. I figure uh, that probably wouldn't have been very entertaining anyways. Uh, so I just went ahead and knocked out the tutorial. That's why my characters already have a little bit of gear and uh, a little bit of levels to them. Uh, so I got a four-man team that I'll be doing this with. I got a Zeller, who's going to be kind of my field manipulator. Uh, I got a Foggernaut here, who's going to be the main healer of the team. My Inutroph, who will be kind of my range damage dealer and kind of my support role. Uh, Inus are great for uh, all kinds of buffs and debuffs and stuff, so he'll be a, a good asset to the team. And then um, my rogue here, Explosia, is going to be... Uh, also kind of a big damage dealer. Um, she works substantially different than uh, the Zeller here, but these two work together really good. Um, Zeller's really good at picking people up and putting them right on the bomb walls. And then eventually, towards much higher levels, um, my rogue here could actually be even somewhat of a, a healing support role. So I'm pretty excited. Uh, I won't take up any more time with chit-chat here. Let's just uh, let's see, what do we have here? Yet another adventurous soul wandering around in Carnum. I don't believe I've seen you here before. Well, it's up to you. But I recommend looking around the village. I'm sure Ternetti would love to meet you. Who's that? She's an important member of the clan Nihin, the most famous family in Incarnum. Ternetti is also the village mayor. She makes a point of meeting any visitors around here. You should pay her a visit. I'm sure she'll help you explore the celestial islands. All right, where do we find her? She's just over there. I've put a marker on your quest notebook in case you lack a sense of direction. I don't know. Is he insulting me right out of the gate? Uh, all right. Thanks. Okay. I figure as I go through this, I'll do my best to kind of explain things for um, maybe some newcomers here who haven't played Dofus before, or maybe you're just kind of looking into it. Uh, perhaps even it's been a long time since you've been here because... A lot has changed. Um, over here is your the little mini map I've got here. Uh, actually, all of these little things that you're seeing are resizable, and and you can move those around on your your layout. This is just kind of the way that I've set mine up. Um, in fact, if you click right here, or you can hit the M button on your mouse or on your keyboard, and it'll bring up the map of the area you're in. This is this is in Carnum up here. It's kind of the the tutorial area. The quests and things up here are going to be very laid out along the line of kind of teaching you the ropes, uh, professions, battling, uh, get you a little bit of leveling. Over here is our very first dungeon that we'll end up knocking out. Um, my very first video here, I'm going to work on trying to go through all the Incarnum quests. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be a fairly lengthy video, so I don't know if I'll break it into two videos instead of just one really long one, but we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm sure these first couple videos will have a lot of extra talking to, just kind of showing you the ropes of these different things. So it might be best to break it up into more than one anyways. All right, so very first place we're going to go, this little blue marker over here shows us where we're supposed to go for this quest. Let's zip over there. All right, here's Ternetti Nihin, literally just one space over, so we haven't traveled very far. This isn't it a lovely day? The sun is shining, the peewees are chirping, and young souls are discovering Incarnum. Well, that would include us. Welcome, Explosia. I am Ternetti, mayor of the village. If you need anything, we have fully equipped workshops, 
friendly end, a marketplace, and a library. And you have nothing to fear as the Carib Militia keep the peace around here. Life is good here. The Celestial Islands is a wonderful place. Well, thank you. How about meeting some of the community's most prominent members? They would be delighted to speak with you. Come back and see me once you've met them, and we'll talk about your future. All right, sounds like a good idea. Oh, and she's got another quest here. Uh, ah, such youthful energy. Incarnum isn't a large place. You won't be getting blisters while exploring the, its interactions. But once you get the world of 12, you'll have to travel much greater distances, and that is definitely true. If you like to travel and discover new lands, I recommend using the zaps to move around quickly and to save your feet. What are the zaps? You see this stone arch next to me? That's what a zap looks like. It's a magical portal that lets you travel from one place to another almost instantly. You only need, part, you only need to part with a few coins to use them. They're really handy. How much are they? To travel between places in Incarnum using a zap, it's less than 20 commas. And that is just an Incarnum, let me tell you. <laughs> the further you go, the higher the cost, so it's always best to have some spare change in your pockets when you're out and about. <laughs> All I know is that you need to have visited an area with a portal before you can use it. In other words, you can't instantly travel to somewhere you've never been before. At least that's how much of the zaps... At least that's how most of the zaps work. Talk to Phi Zellera if you want to know more. She's responsible for maintaining the Celestial Island Zaps. Where's she at? I think she's working on the pasture zaps at the moment. To the northeast of the village. Alright, we'll head that way. Alright. Now, I took the liberty of already making a list of pretty much all the steps to these different quests here in Incarnum. Um, my plan is to read... The NPC's text, mainly because, uh, you know, how often we play, myself included, play a big game like this, an RPG with uh, lots of steps, lots of lore, and, and lots of effort put into all the stuff that's being said, and then we just click the next button and the next button, and we just, you know, blow right through without ever paying any attention at all to what's actually being said. Um, I'm at least going to start that way. If people aren't liking it, if I'm not liking it, if it's too slow... Um, you know, whatever the reasoning may be, uh, maybe we'll stop doing that at some point. That way we move faster. But the goal is to do the quest and to not just blast through them, but to kind of see, you know, what is all the history and the lore behind the quest. So um, leave your feedback below if you're liking it, not liking it. Uh, maybe I should try to change my voice up from time to time on some of these characters. Maybe that'll make it uh, more fun and, and not so monotonous. Uh, but anyways, that's kind of the plan. So we'll we'll go ahead and continue with the quests as I've got them laid out. And, um, and we'll get to do some battling here real soon. Because I know that's the fun stuff, is fighting things, getting loot and all that good stuff. So here we go. Uh, Frank B. Hennen. Nothing better than a cold lemonade for taking the edge off of a hard day's work. <laughs> Ternetti sent you, did she? My dear cousins, My dear cousin likes for adventures to feel at home here. And she has good reason to. It would be a shame not to make use of some free labor. <laughs> I am the son and heir of crippled Nihin, the oldest artesian on the celestial islands. Since my father retired, I've been coordinating the work done by the crafting guilds. I check that the product quality is always flawless. The Nihins have a reputation to uphold. I also have the honor of being President of the committee tasked with awarding the esteemed title of Fellow of Incarnum. Well, it's nice to meet you there, sir. What else you got here? Yeah, we know. Lemonade. Uh, yep. Okay, how do we become a citizen? Ah, you think you might want to wear the title with pride. To earn the honor, you need to be, an ac you need to be accomplished in several professions, but also be an explorer at heart, and you need to serve the Carib Militia. Basically, you need to spend a fair amount of time on the Celestial Islands. If you want to be a candidate, I can assess your skills to see if you are an Atesian worthy of the title. Well, we're ready to prove ourselves. Now, let's see what you're made of. Let's start with something simple. Make some incarnum bread, slice Gungadun, and a mini healing potion. 
You can obtain the necessary raw materials by visiting the various harvesting areas on the island. Find out where those are at. Wheat is found in the fields. Fish in the lake. Oh my goodness, can you imagine that? Fish are in the lake. And nettles grow nearly everywhere. In fact, there's one right here. Once you have all the ingredients, just go to the various village workshops. I'll make I'll mark them on your map as well. Get to work. All right. Uh, let's see. Talk to Frank. Let's go inside of here. I believe. Aha! Yes. Fat, fat to me. Yeah, I wonder I got the name Fat to me. Okay, welcome adventure. If you're looking to wet your whistle, you're in the right place. Introduce yourself. Let me guess, you are a hero in Seek the Dofus, am I right? Well, sorry to disappoint you, but there are no dragon eggs hiding in my establishment. And for that, I'm happy. Such treasures would attract all kinds of greedy types. The Caribs would have the patrol day and have to patrol day and night to discourage thieves. I don't want this tavern turning into a fortress. That would be no good for business. I was once in the Celestial Militia. Ooh, boy, did he let himself go. I have f fond memories of it, but I don't miss the guard duty or the spud peeling. I'm the boss here, and that suits me just fine. Sweet. Sounds good. Check it out. A little musician going on over here. Hello. This is like... Frigos level gear over here. How do I get my hands on that? Oh. Too bad you couldn't. You know, he's worried about having Dofuses here. And this is this is like level, I don't know, probably 120, 130 gear. Just hanging up over here. Alright, well. Okay, well, I think that's all we gotta do in here. Okay. Uh, this is one of those nettles. You can go over and just click on it. And that's how you harvest it. Uh, the professions have changed a lot. Uh, in the beginning, you actually could only hold three professions on your account. Uh, in fact, see this little crossing axis here? It says professions. You can click on that, and this will list all the professions that you can have. Um, I actually have level 200 characters on each of these accounts already, and... Um, my main account, which is an IOP, which was the first character I ever made, um, has a lot of these leveled up quite a ways. Not all of them by any means, but a good number of them. So when it comes to doing the professions, I'm going to use him. Um, I'll use these guys just for these. Um, there's a handful of quests up here on uh, Incarnum that requires you to do these different crafts, and I'm going to use these guys to knock those out. But as far as uh, professions on down the road, I'm just going to use my IOP because anybody who has experienced it before knows it takes a long time to level a profession up. It's changed a lot. I don't feel like going through all that again. Um, so just know that uh, if you see me crafting gear and stuff like that, I'll be using my main account for that. Uh, but I figured I'll, I'll show you kind of what this is. Um, on the professions tab, if you're interested in pursuing this further, uh, I highly recommend you start with any of the gathering kind of professions, which the acclimist is going to be a gatherer of plants. Um, the farmer is going to be for like wheats. In fact, they refer to them as cereals on here. Uh, wheat, barley, and all kinds of things. You'll see more of those as you go across. Fisherman is a gatherer as well, but it's a very slow one. Um, it takes a long time to get that one up. Lumberjack and miner are also two very popular ones. Um, lumberjack and farmer are probably the two easiest ones to level up the quickest um, but trust me quick is a very relative term uh, none of these things go very quickly so it looks like they put green for all the gathering ones see the green background uh, the blue ones are going to be your crafting handyman shoemaker smith um, tailor and then these pinkish colored ones are your mages. that's where like you can here's where you can create a hat or a cloak and then a tailor magus or on this case they call it a costume magus uh, that's where you can uh, change the stats on an island on an item i'm sorry um let's see i don't, I don't think so like right here you can see that this cloak gives me one vitality and one initiative well a magus if if let's say that you could have five of 
vitality and five initiative. If you rolled, if you fought an enemy and you dropped one of these and it came out at having only four vitality and five initiative, a magus is somebody who can try to uh, get that back up to five and five. They can even do what's called overmaging, and that's where they would maybe take it to ten and five. Uh, but that's all stuff way down the road. We'll get to that stuff much later, but that's a quick rundown. Your, each of your gear is going to give you something. This is all the stuff you get just from going through the tutorial, so it's you know pretty much worthless, but it shows you a little bit of how the armor works. Okay, next thing we're going to do is there's a quest right up here. We're going to get this one next because this one allows us to start fighting. Actually, next step I'm going to do is group us up. Okay, so yeah, if you go over here to social, uh, this is the list of everybody that's on your friend list. If you just invite somebody to your friend list, like if, if this was a person here, uh, you could click on them and you can, you'll can you see something here that says invite to friend list. And if you click invite to friend list, their name will pop up here. Now, you won't see their level or achievements or anything. The only way that stuff starts to show up is if you are also on their friend list. So if it's a person you've talked to, you could send them a private message, say, hey, just FYI, I've added you to my friend list. And I'll say, cool, I'll do it too. And then when they do, then you'll always be able to see when that person is online, see what level they are, how many achievements they got. And there's other stuff that pops up as you progress as well. But since these are all my, my group here, I want to make sure we're in a, uh, we are in a group. That way when we do fights, only the people from my group can jump in on that fight. So you would just click on somebody, invite to my group. Click on somebody, invite to group. Click on invite to group. You see them start to line up here on the side, and they have a question mark still, because even though you sent the invitation, they need to accept the invitation. So we're going to go over here and accept, accept, accept. All right. Now we're all in a group. As you can see, everybody's level four. If you hover over top of the, the settings button here, you can see that our combined level is 16. Our idle score is zero, and our average initiative is 15. Uh, so the combined level is 16. The reason that's significant is when you fight somebody, when you fight an enemy that is close to your level, the closer you are to the same level, uh, the more XP you get from that fight. So for example, like this this mob here it has three enemies in it, two level fours and a level two, and the combined level is 10. Ours is 16. If you look at this, you'll see that the XP 504 that's what this character, Explosia, that's what she would get if I fought this mob by myself. Now you see right under that, you see 180 XP with the word group in parentheses next to it. That's what she's going to get if I fight this with everybody in the group. Now this one over here is only level 2. And as you can see, we only get 8 XP as a group. And that's because we're way above that level cap. As you can see, the, the goal is to try to fight enemies that are close to your level. So we'll see how this goes, but we'll go in here and talk to this guy because he's going to give us a mission and he will actually have us go try to fight some things. Let's see here. Uh, attention! At ease! What can I do for you, adventurer? Introduce ourselves. It's a pleasure. I'm the captain of the Carib Militia, the valiant soldiers responsible for the security of Incarnum's citizens and are under my control. Celestial Islands have not always been a haven of peace. We have fought against the Shushus, the Snow Wolf, and the Three Eds Bandit. We have pushed back the Corleric Cracklers and the Cave Arachnes. We try to contain the Schaefers to the cemetery. We control the population of lost souls. Basically, we work hard to keep the peace in the islands. Well, that sure sounds like it. Uh, let's ask if we're suitable. Well, we are always looking for volunteers to help our cause. If you pass the aptitude test, you will join our rakes as a substitute. Let's see what that test is. Corporal Minerve will be in charge of your testing of testing your ability. You will find her at the top of the tower, surveying the surroundings. Good luck. Minerve is demanding. You will have to prove that you are a fine tactician and not just a reckless meathead. Okay, well, I hope we are not just reckless meatheads. Uh, put to the test. Let me check here. Okay, it says to be level 3, so I, I think we can do it. We'll head up there to try that.
Okay, now if I remember right, this is a single person fight, so my team won't be able to jump in to help me with this. Uh, so depending on how the fight goes with my first person will depend on if I try with each person after that. Like I said, I haven't fought anything yet. Uh, the only reason I'm level 4 is because of XP I got from the tutorial. Thing on the lookout and raising the arm if there are problems. That's what's expected of a good centennial. Say you're ready to take the test. Really? What makes you think you're up for it? We don't accept just anybody in the militia. You don't seem the strong type. Well, I'm not. <laughs> Protest and demand the opportunity. Show me now! Good. You don't chicken out as soon as someone casts doubt on your ability. That shows motivation. I knew it. Let's see what you can do. If you can make me eat dust, you pass the test. And I'll give you a tip. Don't find yourself with your back against the wall. Alright, so she probably has some kind of pushback damage. She goes first. That doesn't surprise me. 100 health. That's, that's not too shabby. I'll kind of explain how my classes work for people that are new um, here in uh, in a little bit. Right now, honestly, the spells that I have available and such are so puny, it probably wouldn't even be worth trying to explain it. Rogues here, they work on something called a bomb wall. Um, and that's where... Oh man, it really hurt. Is this going to work or not? Oh, sweet. So you're going to see it right here. When I put two bombs down uh, across from each other, it will put a bomb wall in between there, basically making it a dangerous zone. I'm going to throw this on that side. She's now standing on what's called a bomb wall. Now, if either of these things get broken or get pushed away, uh, that will break that wall line, and then she'll be free to go. But she'll receive damage once I throw it on there, once she first lands on it, and then at the start and the end of her turns. So seeing as... Um, she just walked off of it. Not really much else I can do about that now. But I think I can... I might have her. I can still throw a bomb directly on her. But they don't do near as much damage. You always want to try to use your bomb walls whenever possible. Uh, in fact... I'm just going to go ahead and kick that across. Oh, she's not even going to come back this way. He's just running away. Can I pull some health from that? If she's going to kill it, I might as well take it. I'll take that one too. Oh, well. Maybe. I guess I can blow it up. Put that on there, blow it up. Maybe that'll force her to come back my way now. Wow, she is really running. I've scared her. I don't even think she's eating dust yet. Here we go. Yeah! Alright. Let's see what she has to say now. Staying on the lookout. Wait a minute, you already said that. Ask if you the test is conclusive. Well, I've seen better, but you handled yourself pretty well. Hey, I wasn't the one running away the whole time. You will make a respectable substitute. Find the captain and tell him you're ready for service. Okay, so uh, I don't think this fight's going to be very entertaining at all with my other characters either. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video, knock these out, and then I'll pick them up. Okay, back. that went pretty smoothly. No real close calls, but got her done. Now we can pick up this quest. All right, we passed the test. Perfect. I hope she wasn't too hard on you. Yeah, she did all the running away. I will get you going on a mission without delay. And then we wait for instructions? That doesn't make any sense. Okay, uh, this is the first time this has popped up, so I'll do a quick rundown for anyone new here. Uh, this is my character that just hit a new level. Anytime you hit a new level, uh, this information will pop up. Uh, you get five health points, you get five characteristic points, and you get five pods. Now, the health points are automatic. As you can see, I went from 88 to 93. And the pods, those are what help you to carry things. Everything has a weight to it, which they call pods. And then the characteristic points, you get to pick where those go. And I'll show you that here in just a second. Click OK. As you've no doubt noticed, several areas of Incarnum are inhabited by creatures that have not yet reincar reincarnated. Maybe you have encountered 
Primeric tofus or wispy gobbles, these spirits don't seem to be in a hurry to live a new life. It is our job to get them to take the leap. If we're not careful, Incarna will become overrun with melancholy ghosts. There is only one way to convince these stubborn spooks. It's time to reincarnate. A swift kick up the backside should do it. Or a good violent throttling. Oh yeah, bring on the throttling. It may seem brutal, but it really is the most effective way. Do you feel ready to forcefully point these lost souls? Why oh, that sounds really mean. <laughs> Do you feel ready to forcefully point these lost souls in the right direction? Uh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> of that, I have no doubt. Start with the creatures infesting the fields. They need to understand they can't hang around here forever. All right, we'll go hunt those guys. All right, so right here, you can push C on your keyboard. You can click this little DNA looking like thing, and you'll bring up your characteristic page. I haven't put any points into anything yet because I, I kind of figured it'd be good to explain this in the beginning. So right here is my overall health, 93 health points. Uh, every time you go up a level, that's will go up by five automatically. Things that'll add to all of these stats are gonna be um, your gear. You can have pets and mounts. You can also uh, get scrolls to level some of these things partly. And I'll show you some of that as we get further into levels as well. Uh, the 18 vitality that you're seeing right here, these points are coming from my set of gear here. See, this gives me a vitality, this gives me a vitality. Each one of these, I think, give me one. Um, and then if you right-click on this and you click for the set bonuses, you'll see right here that I get an extra 8 vitality because I have 8 pieces of this set on. Uh, in fact, usually there's a different amount of bonus for the number of sets. Uh, every set, if you have just one piece, it won't give you any bonus. But as soon as you start to wear more than one of whatever set is listed up there, bonuses get better and better. Uh, you'll have some sets that are only two pieces and three pieces, but then you'll have others that are eight pieces like this. And usually if you take the time to get all eight pieces, the bonuses down here can get really nice. Uh, introduction stuff is just a very basic bare minimum. But that's kind of what they're showing here. Uh, you'll notice here um, underneath where it says Intrepid Set, category cloak you'll see next right under that it says weight is one pod that's your weight if you look down here next to this little i guess it's supposed to be a weight uh, it'll show you how many pods you're currently holding and how many you can carry what your max is so i have 28 pods worth of stuff so between my gear and these little items that i've got right here which i think i got these from just completing that quest each one of these are five pods, so that's that's five or one pod, so that's five, ten here, plus my gear. That's how I got to the twenty-eight pods. And over here, this little twenty, very tiny number. Uh, this is the commas. Uh, this is what the currency is here in the game of Dofus. You'll use this for buying and selling and and uh, using the zaps and stuff to teleport around. That's what this is right here. Uh, everything usually has a value to it. If you hover over top of it, it'll show you an average price. Just know those numbers are typically way off. A couple years ago now, they ju they combined all the international servers onto one, and just it really threw the markets all over the place, and I don't think they've ever fully recovered. So just know that you can look there to try to see if something's worth a lot of money or a little bit of money. Uh, I found that most of the resources are fairly accurate but once you start looking at gear value um, these don't have any because you can't sell them see it's got this little lock thing in the corner of the picture it means that you it's locked to this person you can't sell it you can't give it so it's always a good idea to go to the actual market and check the value of it uh, in fact right here you can look it says average price is 19 commas i bet this thing only sells for one there's been so many of them crafted you figure every new person crafts this going through the tutorial so <laughs> there's probably like thousands of them in the market. So if there are any for sale, it's probably one comma. So don't get your hopes up that this thing's worth a lot of money. Uh, let's see. So yeah, each of these categories, vitality is your health. Agility is going to be for air attacks. So if you look at your spells, depending on where you're trying to build your character. So for my rogue, I'm going to go intelligence. That's the red and the fire build is what that's known for. Um, I, I happen to know, I've already researched these characters, and I know which elements I want to build each one of them in. 
And for the rogue, intelligence is the way I want to go. So I would go to this category right here. This is the fire. Each one of these also have a secondary effect. So uh, agility is for air spells, usually in the green right over here, like what you see here. Uh, but they also increase your dodge and your lock. That means your chance of being able to walk away or hold an enemy next to you without losing any of your action points or movement points. These are, you only get so many per turn. And if you're next to something that's got a, a large lock number, let's say they have a lock number of 10. Uh, boy, it's amazing how that just begins to snowball into other things. But just real quick, if you go to the advanced, you can look right here and you can see that my lock number is zero and my dodge number is zero. And it takes 10 agility to add one to both of these. These go up and down at the same time based strictly upon agility. Now you'll have gear sometimes that will give you lock, but then it takes dodge, or it gives you dodge, but it takes lock. That can fluctuate things sometimes. But strictly for agility, every 10 agility you pump in, you get one point for both of these. So if I have a zero, and I stand next to something that has 10, I'm not gonna be able to walk away from it. It's gonna have me locked, is what that means. It means they've locked me. Uh, likewise, uh, they're gonna be able to walk away from me. They're gonna be dodge me. They can just walk away from me anytime they want because I have no chance of locking them next to me. So um, that's what agility has an effect on. And you'll see that play a bigger role as we move further into the game as well. Chance increases your prospecting. Um, prospecting is a number that increases your likelihood of getting a drop from an enemy. For example, again I'm going to click onto something new already. Encyclopedia right here. These are creatures that are in the Incarnate, this little fragile demonic rose. If I click on this, it'll show me the things that it can drop. All right. Uh, anything with a gold bar around it means it's the more rare items that can be dropped from this particular creature. Now if I hover over top of this, you can see that I have a 49% base acquisition. That means I've got basically a 50-50 chance of dropping this if I fight one of these guys. Uh, this one here, about a 50-50 chance. This, I've got more like a 2% chance. Your prospecting, as you increase your prospecting, it increases your likelihood of this drop. In fact, if you see there next to acquisition, in parentheses it says prospecting plus idols. The, all four of my characters have zero prospecting at the moment, so I'm getting no bonus at the moment for prospecting. But if I had a chance-based character, and I was pumping points into here, uh, this would increase my prospecting. That's what that one does. Strength is pretty easy. It increases your pods. Every one point you put into there increases your pods by five. So that can be real handy. In fact, if you're gonna have multiple characters and you're gonna build professions, uh, I highly recommend that you build all your professions on a single character and that that character would be whichever one you're gonna make strength. Because if you start harvesting wood or harvesting uh, iron and such, um, those things are five pods a piece, and you will be filling up your inventory stupid fast. Well, if you put it on a strength-based character, you're going to be able to carry a whole lot more. Um, for example, this character right now can carry 1,000 pods. My IOP, which is, which is basically strength-based, he's a hybrid, but he can carry 25,000 pods. <laughs> He's, he's like a walking warehouse. It's pretty fun. But that's what that does. Strength adds to your pods. Intelligence adds to your healing abilities. Now, that's where I was talking about how my rogue will down the road become maybe like a backup healer. She doesn't have any healing spells, but I can get weapons that have the ability to heal. My Foggernaut, he's going to be the healer of my team. This is where I'm going to want to put his points to increase your heals. And the last one here is Wisdom. Uh, wisdom is serves uh, two purposes as well. Wisdom is what affects your leveling. In fact, out of all of these things, it's the only one that if you go to put a point into it, it takes three points instead of one to go up. So these are all one to one at the beginning. In fact, if I click, uh, oh, not that one. Click this. It says one point equals one point. Now, once I get to 100 points are put in here, you'll see it switch to two points equals one intelligence point. When I get up to another 100, it'll say 3 points equals 100, or equals 1 intelligence. But 
by t or wisdom starts out three to one right out of the gate. Uh, it used to be back in the day, people would pump everything they had into wisdom, try to power level their character up, and then reset their character to try to put all their points back where they actually want them. Uh, you can't really do that very well nowadays, not unless you've already got high level characters to uh, to power level them. But wisdom will affect your leveling speed. Uh, it also affects your ability to dodge enemies stealing your AP and MP. Uh, they have spells that they can cast at times that will take MP from you or take AP from you on your turn. Well, your wisdom helps decrease the chance of them being able to do that. If you have any questions about these, they're pretty self-explanatory, especially if you're familiar with how RPG MMOs work already. Uh, it's pretty standard. Um, and then the, if you hover over these, it does a really good job of telling you exactly what those things do. So, uh, yeah. So, all right. So we picked up our quest from him. Anytime you get a new quest down here, you can click the title of it, and it'll bring it up, what it is you're supposed to do your reward for completing the quest. If there's more steps, sometimes you won't see a reward down here yet, but it'll tell you that there'll be more steps to do it. Anything over here that you have pinned, when you click these on and off, if you look over here on my little mini map, here I'll zoom out a little bit, you'll see markers pop up on there. And if you see what I'm supposed to do, I'm supposed to craft this incarnum bread, this sliced gungan and the mini heels. It's showing me where to go to do those on this specific quest. Uncommon transport. If I click that, the this spot up here mark, that's where that lady is I'm supposed to go talk to. The Fee uh, Zolor, Zoloria, Zolora. Zolora? I think that's how good. You can mark as many of these as you want, but you can only have up to five markers on your map. So, like, for instance, it's going to... Oh, I have five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, well, if I had one more quest and I tried to mark it, it wouldn't let me mark it on the map. You can only have five markers on a map at a time. A uh, little trick if you wanted to have more quests to show up, for example, this one here, I could turn off like those two. And even though I still have this quest marked on the map, I'm only marking one of the points. So I could mark a couple more quests if I wanted to. So yeah, that's how that works. All right, so we picked up this quest. This right here, little icon you see hovering over here on the left, this also will show you which quest you have queued up at the moment. You can hit the little minus button to shrink it down or expand it out. Um, I'm going to go ahead and shrink that down. All right, and then, so yeah, let's take off and go do some fighting. Okay, here we go. All right, so I went ahead and put in my character points where I plan on the elements that I'm going to make each one of these characters. They don't really make a big enough impact right now for me to go through why I'm doing what I'm doing with these guys. Uh, honestly, in fact, <laughs> some of these guys, like old Greybeard here, I'm going to make him agility-based, but he doesn't even have an agility spell yet available. So even though I put the points into agility, until he's level 6, I don't even have a spell I can use for him. So it's kind of funny. That that's the situation, but once we get a handful more levels, probably around level 10, I think all these guys will hopefully have spells within their category, and I can start to discuss a little more about what I'm doing. Okay, so Battlefields is over here. we got to defeat one small tofu, and if you, if you hold the Z key, you'll see the names of each of the mobs pop up, and you can kind of see what's inside of that mob. Like here we got a Wildflower, Evil Dandelion, and Demonic Rose. Those are three of the four things we need to fight, and it's in one group. So, let's go ahead and take that one on. And uh, go ahead and start progressing the request here. And I have no idea what character, what order these guys are going to be in yet. Alright, let's see. Sir Tank is first. So you, your characters are going to line up in the order that they'll go. Uh, next, I need to have Explosion, then Old Greybeard, and then Smoke and Mirrors. Okay. Um, I was putting these in order down on my screen so that now I can just hit Alt Escape and I'll tab between each screen without having to like click to each person. 
uh, top left corner, it'll show whose screen I'm actually on, and Tank is the one that'll go first. So, there we go. All right, uh, so Tank's a lot here. He's going to be intelligence-based, and he has an attack that shoots just diagonally. Um, obviously, it's not going to do me any good. Even my strength attack can't even reach out there. But he uses these things called turrets. You can see this little harpooner thing right here. I'm going to cast that out there, and it's a summon. It's basically going to attack on my behalf. Now, that seems like an amazing thing, except for what you got to realize is that his summons can attack enemies and allies. So you really got to kind of think about where you're going to put these things. In fact, it might even turn around and shoot me. Okay, yeah, I'm far enough away. Um, my rogue, as I was saying, uses bombs. I don't think... Nothing here is going to last long enough to even bother with a with a bomb. Just past my turn. All right, here goes my in you. Yep, everything's too far away. I can't reach nothing yet. Just past my turn. Nothing here is going to reach. Uh, yep, everything's too far away. You'll probably see it attack me this time. See. Taking out my own team. I know that seems like a really bad idea to have something like that on your team, but trust me, it's going to be fun as they as it gets further and and I can uh, like I could throw a bomb down to block the line of sight and it wouldn't be able to shoot my characters now. Um, I'm not going to put that there though because I need to be able to see past here in case one of my other characters can reach. But, but there's ways around getting hit, is what I'm getting at. In fact, I'm going to put this little sack down. What this does um, is anybody that was in that AoE that you saw when I threw that down, it's now going to take the damage on our behalf. So Sir Tanks a lot and Old Greybeard are protected by this until it's destroyed, which honestly won't take too long. It doesn't have much health. Ooh, but I can reach one. Yay! All right. Um, oh. Okay, because it's a summon... It has five move points. I can I can run over here. I can run over here. Uh, you might take it. I could have ran it up here and put it right there so it blocked my line of sight if I wanted to. Kind of some fun stuff I can do there. All right. Now, this character has the ability to teleport. And what it does is it'll put me on the exact same steps, like I'm up one over two. And it's putting me up one over two from this person right here. So I can do that to get over there. And then can I... Oh, I can't quite reach. Okay. Well, at least I'm closer. Can I reach with him yet? No, I don't think I can. Yeah, this is where fighting in the beginning is pretty boring. Not really a whole lot I can do yet. But it will get better. All right, pass that. I should manage to finish this off. Okay. Now, this is the loot that we dropped from that fight. Uh, each person is listed here. The XP that they got from that fight is listed here, and everybody is completely identical at the moment. That's Normally, this would not happen. <laughs> it's only because everybody is literally completely identical. These are the commas that we got. So if you add that up, 12, 20, 21, got 21 bucks from that fight. And then over here is the loot that we got. This is gear. These are ambulance. That's a headpiece there. And if you see, it says level 8, and it's highlighted red. It's because my characters are all level 5. This character specifically is who that's going to be showing. Um, but this is a level 7. This is a level 8. So I can't wear that gear yet. That's why it's showing up as red. But as you can see... It's way better than the one vitality and one initiative I have on the gear now. So as I get up to these, uh, get up a few more levels, I can start putting on some of this gear and have a much better um, effect from those things. All right. Also down here, you'll notice that our quest updated, knocked out three of the four things. And as you can see over here as well, all we got to do is defeat one small tofu. So let's find us a fight real quick with that tofu. And then... Uh, and then that might be where I need to end the first video. Cause, man, 
I can only imagine how long this video is going to be. I, I like I said, this is my very first time. I uh, I plan on probably cropping some things out, trying to shorten it a bit. Um, but I, I don't know what it's going to be down to. I don't expect to make short videos necessarily because my whole plan is to go through the missions, read the missions, and you know if I'm cutting it off ever after every mission that I've read, it, all my videos would be so short and not even any fun. So, um, so I don't expect my videos to be short. But I do know there's got to be a limit. People aren't going to want to sit and watch them forever. Okay, so that updated the battlefield. So we'll close these, and we'll go talk to the captain real quick to turn in our mission. All right. All right, captain, here we are. State that you have completed your mission. Boom! Level six. All right, I got a new spell. Got my five health points, five more character points, and five pods. Very well. I have another job for you. Several locals have complained of being sprayed by glutes. They may seem like much Odo about nothing. They may seem like much Odo about nothing. Huh. But when these elemental creatures become too enthusiastic, they constitute a danger. Any drownings would be a tragedy. So you will teach these glutes a lesson and ensure they keep their distance. All right. Oh, that was easy enough. All right, so I'm going to end the video there. And then uh, I will make sure and pick up the next video right where this one left off, and we'll knock out some more missions. Thanks so much for watching. If you got any feedback, any comments, please feel free to leave them below. Uh, I am new to this in every aspect of the way, and I've even said that a few times already. So if you could, the real thing I'd like to know is if you are or are not liking me reading the missions. Uh, I realize we're very early in the game, so maybe these stories don't even sound very entertaining. Maybe it's something that we... Uh, wait until we're out of Incarnum before we start reading the quests. But either way, uh, your feedback's very much appreciated. Thanks for taking the time to watch this, and I hope you have an awesome day.